Hello, good morning. This is Siva Devaki from uh, Mass Mailer. Thank you so much for uh, joining the webinar today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, email marketing and email deliverability tips, uh, which can really help you to deliver your emails uh, better. Right? Well, uh, as uh, always keep saying that uh, email sending is not uh, very easy as you think. At the same time, it's not that difficult if you really uh, try to put your heart and soul. So I keep it simple. Email, email sending is an art supported by uh, technology, right? And if you can really master this art or the email sending art, and use the best technology uh, with the best technology. That way you can actually be very successful in your email campaigns. And again, when it comes to email marketing, a uh, lot of planning strategy we put in place and we uh, have the right content, right people that we are targeting, right time and, you know, everything goes hand in hand and then you kind of see the results and the improvement, right? But there are many things that are nitty gritty that you may not know uh, that actually would influence your email campaign performance behind the scenes. And knowing those things, uh, the nitty gritty details of the email sending uh, is very important, right? And some of it, uh, can be uh, utilized or fixed by the technology and some of it by a human. So that's, a, that's the reason why it is a combination or a mix of art and technology is really gonna uh, help you to get better results. So it's very important to kind of understand um, how uh, the actual email sending and the email receiving, all of this really works. Um, so that all the effort that you're going to put in place to really come up with a proper strategy of email sending will be fruitful. And I've kind of segregated these tips into four uh, main sections that are that I call them as a golden rules, and you really have to focus on these four important aspects of um, email sending. You need to. You need to check your email infrastructure. That's the starting. And you got to check your email content. And you got to follow the best sending practices. And you got to use a good target list. Uh, I've not put the strategy item here. Assuming that you're good in strategy, you know what you're doing. Um, and you know what you want to get, right? Uh, meaning what your goals are. So that's, that's more on the planning and the strategy side. Uh, assuming all of that is there, now you really have to have a proper email infrastructure, uh, the right email content, and you got to follow the best sending practices, and you really need to have the good target list. So if you have all these four uh, working together in tandem, then uh, obviously you can really get the right uh, campaign performance that you really want to achieve. Okay. Now let's take a look at... Uh, the details on every aspect as mentioned, all the four, four golden rules. Let's start with the uh, email infrastructure. What is that you really have to check in the email infrastructure? First of all, when you're sending out an email, you're sending it from a specific domain and you're also gonna use a specific IP address. Uh, and again, some of it is gonna be a little technical, especially in the infrastructure side. Uh, so please bear with me, I'll try to uh, be uh, very subtle and you know very normal when I'm trying to explain all these technolo uh, technical terms and technology behind this, um, so that you know even if you're not that technical, you will be able to understand. Right. So when I say authenticate your sending uh, domain and the sending IP, uh, so let, let's say your company has abc.com as a domain and you want to use abc.com to send out emails, uh, you know, when you're sending out newsletter, whatever, for the reason, right? So 
when you're sending out these emails, the recipient servers, um, meaning like the people that you're receiving these emails, uh, maybe in, in, a, in a company or maybe they're you know, real people uh, who are just individuals who are receiving these emails, if you're in a P2C scenario, right? Um, the receiving side, the server will have to make sure that the sender is the right sender, an authentic sender. Because as you know, a lot of, a lot of spammers and spoofers are out there uh, who would try to mimic as if they own abc.com domain, but they're not the owners or you know, they're not legitimate senders. So that's the reason why you have to authenticate your domain and IP address. You know, that's all what you need to know. And how do you do this? Um, is basically using the technology. So that's the reason why I'm, uh, I kind of repeat those words. Art and technology is a combination is what you really need to uh, make sure that you have, um, you know, if you want to be successful in your email campaigns. So you got to uh, implement the SPF, DKM, DMARC for email deliverability. That is basically for the authentication as well. Uh, again, I'm not getting into too much details on what it is. It's again, um, all you need to understand is you got to authenticate your domain and IP address. Um, and uh, there's technology that's available that can help you to do this. Uh, that's uh, the DNS settings uh, for SPF, DKM, DMARC um, is available and that you need to make sure that you have that in place. And if you're working with Mass Mailer, we can help you set it up. Um, whoever you're working with the ESP, and obviously you'll have to work with your IT team to make sure that you're implementing uh, this for getting email deliverability. And again, whenever you're trying to get an uh, email marketing platform like Mass Mailer, we provide you a dedicated IP address that's our um, that's how we do it. We don't use shared IPs. Uh, so you will receive a dedicated IP address. So uh, you will have to warm up that IP address and the domain because you're starting, just starting to use that IP address. Um, what it means again, I'll try to put together, um, you know, simple words here to make you understand what, you know, what, what warm up means. So it's basically you buy a car and you don't use that car for six months, one year, and it's dead, the battery is dead, right? It's of no use. Uh, similarly, if you're buying an IP address uh, for sending out an email, uh, buying meaning, basically you're provisioning, you're getting an IP address, a dedicated IP address from Mass Mailer uh, to send out email campaigns. Uh, it's very important to make sure that you send emails, meaning keep running the engine, right? You have to use that IP address to send emails slowly and steadily. So, um, when you're starting a car, you don't go on 100 miles per hour in the very first second. So you got to slowly, gradually go. Same thing, you got to slowly and steadily warm up your IP address in the initial part of your, um, you know, uh, beginning of your campaigns. And eventually you can uh, get up to the volume, uh, whatever volume that you want to hit per day or per month, per week. Uh, but you got to really slowly warm up your IP address. And this technology that's available, given or provided by Mass Mailer, that is going to auto warm up your IP and also do the continuous IP warm up in the domain. So we have a technology that's available for you, um, you know, that can uh, help you um, warm up your IP or IPs. If you're going to use multiple IPs or multiple domains, no problem. Uh, we have the right technology that can help you to warm up your uh, IP and the domain. It's very important. While you're sending uh, your uh, campaigns, you have to periodically monitor how is your domain and IP uh, doing? Are they really delivering emails? How are they really doing? Uh, so it's basically you know, doing a health check for your car, right? You're running a car, but periodically, uh, you got to maintain it and manage it and make sure it's all working, all good. So you have to do those kind of health checks. So similarly, you got to monitor the domain and IP reputation uh, periodically. Uh, it could be daily, weekly, monthly, uh, however you want to do it, but it got to be done in a, uh, in a periodic manner. So anytime you're sending out a campaign, make sure that you actually monitor the domain and IP reputation. That's ideal. 
Um, you know, it's very easy to do it. You just click off a button. You'll come to know if the IP is blacklisted or not blacklisted, domain is blacklisted or not blacklisted. And there are other tools by Google and Microsoft where you can actually check, um, you know, um, uh, are the emails actually uh, going to the inbox or not going to inbox. And, you know, all of that thing are the knowledge that can be, um, you know, obtained. Uh, so, uh, as I said, when you're actually trying to um, do this health check, it's very important to make sure that your domain and IP is not blacklisted, right? Uh, so, if, uh, if that is blacklisted by any of the uh, organizations, you have to request for a removal from the blacklist, provided there's a genuine reason. If you're really spammed and if you know that you've done a, a mistake, uh, you may not be able to get out of uh, that um, you know, blacklist but you can still try, uh, but you got to promise them that you're not going to repeat it. So if you get it to move today, but if you still follow those bad practices, again, you'll get blacklisted, it will not help you. Uh, so basically you'll have to make sure that your domain and IP is not blacklisted. You got to monitor that. And um, MassMed does provide you a tool to do that as well. Uh, this is very important when you're, especially if you're trying to uh, use um, the email campaigns for prospecting purposes, you know, meaning, um, so you're trying to nurture uh, certain leads that you may have and trying to prospect them so that they can actually try or buy your product or service, right? Uh, so especially when you're trying to do prospecting, we recommend that you actually use a separate domain and IP address uh, for, especially for the prospecting emails. That's because you do not want to hurt uh, the reputation of your existing business domain, uh, let's say abc.com is your main domain. You don't want to use that abc.com to send out these prospecting emails. We recommend that you buy something else. It could be similar to what your website domain, that is abc.net or abc.org or abc.us or whatever it is, you know, something similar to your current website. Uh, that's what you have to uh, use for prospecting and you have to authenticate that domain and IP address, and you can do email forwarding and whatnot. That's more nitty gritty again, on to make sure that the sending process and the response process is gonna be seamless and you don't have to put any effort, right? Uh, so that you could do um, easily. So we're done with the email infrastructure tips. Uh, again, there are many more, but I'm uh, trying to uh, focus on the most important aspects of uh, the email uh, deliverability and the email marketing. And the next topic is the content. Uh, it's very important to make sure that you write good content, but is that content actually gonna work for you? Right? There's a lot of technicality uh, that is involved there. While your email content could be catchy and it is you know, uh, definitely uh, maybe useful, um, and resourceful for the recipients, but is that content going to work for me? No, not, right? It's very important to check that. Um, you know, this is again an after you got to use catchy subject lines. So the people who are actually receiving your email uh, really like to open your email, um, you know, because there's a catchy subject line, right? Uh, so you got to really make sure that you have that to get a, a good optimal um, email campaign performance. A um, little technical details here. Uh, if you're using HTML, uh, you got to also have the text version of your email. That way you're actually sending out both HTML and text version, not only just the HTML. It's very important to know. Um, the reason is, you know, um, I mean, most of the servers are capable to receive um, HTML and a lot of users do opt uh, to receive the HTML, but some servers, are some users may not want to receive any graphics in HTML, they may just turn it off, but what percentage of people are there? What percentage of uh, email servers are there? Could be minute, it could be, I don't know, the exact uh, thing in the overall internet world. Um, my guess is that it is um, less than 0.1%, but still there is, it's out there. So um, for a higher email deliverability, um, it is always, recommended that you use both HTML and text versions of your email and mass mailer does have that capability for you. It's very important nowadays 
um, that, that emails are actually rendered properly on um, many devices because people have started using iPhones and Android phones or tablets, various devices to actually look at the email. Um, it's, um, you know, I mean, people do look at the computer browser, uh, but people are on the go, people are driving, people are, you know, not working on their computer, they're just opening their phone or a tablet and looking at your email. It's very important to make sure that the email actually is rendering properly on both devices and, um, you know, for which you will have to make sure you preview your email on various email clients. Mass Miller does have a capability to do that. It's, uh, you know, we provide the technology uh, so that your um, template is not, you know, uh, are properly formatted. So if you are especially using our template builder, uh, we have capability to, um, you know, automatically um, format your emails so that they actually are responsive in nature when it is rendering uh, both on, um, you know, a regular computer uh, browser, I could be a, a mobile um, or a, any kind of other uh, device that uh, people may use to open the emails. Okay. And also, uh, it's very important uh, for you to make sure that you have um, your email uh, opening in a browser um, because some people like to take a PDF and they would like to actually click um, view. Uh, the email in a browser so that they get a full full view of it. Uh, so MassMailer does have a capability to do that. Uh, you just have to uh, work with the right syntax in your email template to put in that link. Um, so you just have to make sure that um, you're able to uh, provide this uh, feature for your recipient so that they can actually look at your email in a web browser. And if you're gonna have images in your uh, email template, you got to make sure that you're going to add the alt text. Um, that is very, very important. Uh, so um, make sure that you have the alt text. Uh, it's very simple to add that alt text uh, for any image. It's very important again to have an email signature. So don't just leave thanks your name. Uh, you should have, you know, at least your contact information, company name, or the address. Uh, you know, uh, it's ideal to have full-blown email signature. Uh, so that way it is compliant. So you got to follow the email compliance as well. And uh, obviously, um, you know, email signature is a key part uh, in the email compliance. Uh, so you should have that. And again, if somebody do not want to hear from you, you should have a way for them to opt out from your emails. Uh, so you should have an unsubscribe link uh, in all the emails that you're sending out, especially if it is not a non-transactional email. When I say non-transactional, it is more like uh, you know, order status or uh, maybe the shipment notification, you know, uh, like a calendar alert. So those are all like you know, um, non-transactional. Uh, but anything that is non-transactional, if you're sending out a newsletter, prospecting kind of an email, where you want people to um, you know, unsubscribe, if they don't want to hear from you, you should have a link and make it very easy. And never use a red font in your emails. That's a, a big no-no. Uh, so like email spam filters can actually catch it and you know, they can just flag your email as um, you know, uh, spammy email. So don't use a red font. And never use large images. So if the email is bulky, uh, you know, with uh, large images and attachments, especially, uh, so you may get a hit on the email deliverability. So um, if you if you have to use images, that's okay. Uh, put some low resolution, but it's still gonna render properly. Uh, but don't make it a large image. Uh, you can always convert it to um, you know JPEG and make it uh, tiny. Uh, image when it comes to size. Uh, same with attachments. Uh, so don't send bulky uh, attachments. It got to be, you know, um, as less as possible. And never use the excl exclamation marks in your emails. That's uh, a big no-no again. Uh, so that's a uh, sign uh, for email spam filters. Um, again, um, when can you use it and when you cannot use it? Um, you can always uh, try to analyze your email content um, using our email monitor tool. Uh, so basically exclamation mark is not recommended to be used in uh, the email content. 
and never use the uh, never use Flash or JavaScript. Uh, so that's a big no no. Um, you know, don't do that. Uh, that's gonna basically um, not give you a good deliverability. So don't use Flash or JavaScript. And never use uh, all caps. So that's uh, a big no no. Uh, whether it is subject or the email content, you should not use uh, all caps in your email content. Very important to make sure that you are checking for uh, the spelling uh, for the email, whether it is subject or the, con uh, the actual email body, you gotta make sure that you do the spell check, uh, very, very important. And if you are referring to any third party uh, website in your email content, meaning if if you have links to other websites, uh, you gotta make sure that uh, you know, you're checking them for blacklist. Um, and if they're broken, again, that's not a good sign. So you gotta make sure that those are not broken or blacklisted. Uh, so those links, if those are, don't use that. And um, don't use spammy words. Uh, but again, how do you know that it's a spammy word? Uh, again, the tools available, MassMail does have a tool called Email Monitor, which is gonna give you um, you know, uh, a full explanation about the words that you're using. If at all those are spammy words, it'll give you a recommendation on what can be used um, and what not to be used. Uh, so don't uh, have the spammy words in your email content. That's good. Um, you know, we learned a lot about email um, content, uh, but how about the sending practices? It's uh, again, you know, it's not, uh, you got to know what to do and how to do it. So uh, let's follow the best sending practices and let's take a look, what are those? You gotta personalize your emails, uh, meaning, so when you're sending out email, it's uh, uh, highly recommended that you have a name such as dear first name, right? Uh, so that way at least um, the recipient servers know that you're actually sending it to the real people, right? And people are receiving it and they're reading it and you're addressing them by the name. So you got to personalize your email, it's very important. And test your emails before sending them. So you got to make sure that uh, the emails actually would get delivered. Uh, so you got to test them, um, meaning so it's like send it to yourself and see how it looks. Uh, does it have all the uh, personalization um, that is done properly? Is it properly formatted? Is it rendering properly on various devices? Are the links working? Uh, are the graphics okay? Is the text okay? Everything is aligned properly? You know, many aspects of email, right? So you gotta test your emails before actually sending a campaign. So it's very important to make sure that you have a, a recipient name in the two field. Uh, so the two address and two name, the two aspects are like whenever you wanna send out email um, and especially in mass mailer, uh, we, uh, while we ask you for the email uh, field um, that you're actually gonna populate um, and there's a, you know, actual two name as well. Uh, so you got to mention that uh, two name in the recipient um, uh, name field, that's a, a two name. So that actually improves the overall email deliverability, um, you know, because you are uh, saying that I am sending it to the real people and this is the name, I know them well. So basically, uh, you know, um, it's, it's more authentic to have the two name also populated. And um, let's say you're sending out uh, 10,000 emails, not everybody is opening and, you know, some of them are actually not even opening or not even clicking. Uh, so maybe the strategy for those people who are not opening and clicking should be different. You got to send them a retarget campaign. So you can't treat those people who are opening and clicking equally uh, with other people who are not opening and uh, not clicking. So you have to come up with a different strategy for those people. So, you know, um, again, how you want to do it, it's a different topic, but you got to have retarget campaigns uh, for the low engaged sub subscribers. Do they really want to hear from you? right? Um, you know, that decision you need to make, and that's another, um, you know, uh, practice that you need to follow. And it's very important to make sure that you send these emails uh, at certain, you know, uh, frequency, uh, right intervals. If it's a newsletter, is it a monthly newsletter, weekly newsletter, 
bi-weekly, quarterly, whatever, you got to send uh, the emails at right intervals. Um, we recommend that you have to have these emails uh, every month uh, that are sent out. Um, you know, if you're sending out quarterly or yearly, then you know, you're not using an IP address in between, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a negative, it's a minus, or, you know. Um, even if you have to send quarterly newsletter, which is very important, uh, and if you're thinking, hey, what is it I can send for every month? Maybe, you know, you can hire uh, an agency who can help you draft out a nice looking newsletter every month and feed in some content and keep in touch. And, you know, it's basically going to improve the overall email deliverability. So, uh, we strongly recommend that, um, you know, you have to have those um, uh, right intervals when you're sending out emails to your recipients. And you have to have a, consist a consistent uh, campaign schedule. It's now that you're just starting this month and, you know, abruptly you're stopping it for a few months and again starting now. You got to have a consistent uh, schedule. If you say that I'm going to send out monthly email campaigns, just go monthly and keep it, keep it coming, right, every month. Uh, so don't give those breaks in between. And never send it to generic uh, sender email addresses. Uh, you know, that's, um, I mean, sometimes it may be necessary, but sometimes uh, um, if it is not necessary, then don't, you, don't send it to them, right? Um, you know, Google always like to have the proper name um, whenever, not just Google or any other ESP, um, you know, they would like to have a proper name uh, for the actual uh, email address. Uh, there's a random abc123 at gmail.com. You know, that's not a good email address. Um, so uh, even it could be real, but creating something like that itself is a bad one. And if you're sending out emails to the generic email addresses, that's actually going to um, uh, hurt your reputation. Uh, and again, you have to make a judgment on, you know, who those people are, is it uh, real people, not real people? Uh, should we send it to them, not send it to them? You know, you got to make a decision, but you know, you should make sure that you're not using generic sender um, email address and there's generic recipient, I mean, it's both. So if you're sending out uh, email from say uh, your company, um, it should always come from a person, but if you want to use it like marketing at abc.com, that is okay. Uh, that's that's fine uh, as, as long as it's um, um, you know a real uh, inbox, no problem. Or it could be an alias or a group email. That's not a problem. Uh, but don't just make it as a random uh, name. Uh, you know, abc one two three at uh, yourcompany.com or gmail.com. Or that's not a good sign. So you got to have a, a proper uh, sender email address. Um, and um, the recipient email addresses also should be a proper email addresses. Again, um, you know, how do you make the judgment is, is on you, uh, but it's a, a recommendation to make sure that you have a proper sender and a proper recipient email addresses. Very important aspect of auditing your email deliverability. And again, this is a health check that you would do periodically. Uh, we recommend that you do it every quarter. It's a lengthy process. Uh, you know, we support and we offer the service. Um, you know, it's a packaged offering that we have. Uh, it has a, a detailed audit report of your uh, email domain, your e email campaign performance, uh, the health check, the content, uh, the recipients who are sending. You know, we will look at uh, every single aspect of your email. Uh, and guide you on what has gone wrong uh, and what could go wrong if you continue doing what you're doing and what improvements you can actually make. Uh, so, so it's not a one-time thing that you just do it like, you know, um, in a blue moon and forget, you got to do it periodically. Ideally, you should be doing it every uh, quarter because you want to make sure that you're, you know, having a, a good health always. Um, so you should audit your email deliverability and also implement the best practices that are recommended. All right, now, again, we looked at uh, all other aspects of infrastructure, email content, uh, you know, best practices of sending everything, but who are you actually sending? The target list. Is it good or bad? If it's a bad target list that you're sending, it's a waste. So it's very important to make sure that you have a good list and what it is, let's take a look. 
don't buy email lists. So it's a big no-no. So if you're just buying email lists and trying to randomly send them email, uh, they don't know you, you don't know them, that's a big no-no. That's going to hurt your reputation. Um, but if you say, hey, I'm a new business. I have to hunt for business. I, do, I need to do an outreach. I have no other way. I have to buy less. Well, there are certain best practices that you got to follow, but don't expect that you're going to get a, a good campaign performance if you're purchasing less. Um, you know, that's, we don't recommend that. Uh, again, if you have to do it, well, you got to know that it may not give you the right results. Uh, so our recommendation, don't buy email list. And never try to scrape email list from websites. So this is where you can actually get spam uh, traps in your email database. Um, that's gonna hurt uh, badly uh, if you have a spam trap, especially in your database. Uh, so a big no-no for sure. Um, don't uh, scrape um, email list from sites. Um, and again, a lot of people do this because they have to prospect. Again, you know, as I said, that's not recommended. But if you have to do it, that's up to you. Uh, but don't expect good email deliverability. Uh, we recommend that you have double opt-in. So um, you know, if not double opt-in, at least single opt-in, right? Uh, so people want to opt into your email address, uh, email database. Uh, so how a double opt-in is what we recommend um, you know, on your website. Uh, that's the list that you really want to grow eventually and you want to market to. Make sure that your email list is very clean and valid. Uh, so we have a verified tool that can actually help you to clean it. Uh, again, what does it do? It's not just the email format it's looking at. Um, email validation means a lot of things you know, 60 to 70 different uh, aspects of email that we look at, um, right from the format to the domain. Uh, is the MX entry available? Is it an alias? Is it a free email? Is it a short-lived uh, short email, meaning temporary email? Is it a toxic email? Um, uh, does this email inbox actually exist? Or is it just a, you know, a placeholder email that is kept on the server? Um, is it a, a generic email address? Uh, is it a personal email address? How long this email has been? You know, there are many aspects of uh, email and you got to make sure that you actually clean the bad ones and keep only the valid ones. Um, and we have our auto suppress feature. Anything that's bad is you know, uh, washed out or clean, meaning we don't let you send emails to the bad ones. Uh, so that way that effort is taken out from you. Uh, so we have that auto suppression feature in uh, mass media. Span traps, do not have span traps. And how do you uh, avoid them? Again, you have to use a um, uh, tool provided by Mass Mailer or any other email verifier uh, who can actually identify the span traps and delete them. Um, again, span traps meaning those are kept to trap you uh, as a spammer. So if you're scraping data or the email addresses from the websites, um, that's maybe, um, you know, a way for you to get uh, spam trap email addresses in your database. So don't do that, okay? And segment your email list. So when you're sending out uh, um, emails to your target uh, uh, buyers or recipients, uh, you got to segment them in a proper manner. You know, some of them could be customers, some of them are prospects. And if they're customers, prospects, uh, maybe by region, by industry, by uh, certain product category that they purchase from you, you know, uh, what they want to receive from you. Right, based on their interest. Some people may want to hear from you uh, only for the newsletter, some product news, some product updates, uh, some maybe they just want to get deals from you. you now, whatever it is, so you got to segment the list and make sure that you're sending the right email to the right people. Um, that's very important. And if somebody wants to uh, get out of your email database, just let them go. Um, it is better not to have those people who do not want to hear from you. Otherwise, they may flag your email as a spam. You don't want that. Uh, spam uh, reports are very bad uh, for your domain and IP. Uh, so you want to make sure that you don't have any uh, spam reports. So make sure that anybody uh, who wants to unsubscribe, just delete them, uh, remove them from your database. Um, and um, 
you know, uh, make it easy for people to unsubscribe from their emails. Uh, don't make it hard. So it got to be one click and done. And if uh, people are actually um, not opening, not engaging um, with your emails, just let them go from your database or don't put them in your email campaign. So you got to constantly purge those inactive uh, recipients uh, from your email list. And the bounce rate should not be more than 2%. So meaning like, see, that's the uh, industry standard. Um, I would say you should have 0%, but sometimes you may not you know, be validating emails every time that you're sending out uh, a campaign. Um, you know, that's okay, but you got to periodically check uh, for uh, email validity and make sure that the bounce rate is uh, close to zero, if not zero. And if you have the bounced email addresses, don't send emails to those bounced emails repeatedly. That's gonna hurt your reputation. Uh, so if you know that you have a, a bounced email, have that in the suppression list. And uh, again, with mass mailer, we take care of our mark if you, anything that bounces, uh, we don't try to send emails again to that bounced email. So make sure that you're not sending out email to the bounced email address. So, that's kind of, you know, the final <laughs> um, topic about um, uh, the target list and final point that I want to kind of highlight. Um, end of the day, it is, you know, um, right strategy, right planning, right tools. Um, and then, um, you know, you got to know the art. Uh, so you really need to know the nitty gritty. And there are many, many um, aspects uh, beyond what I just uh, talked about today. Um, you know, again, not we can't uh, cover everything in one webinar. Uh, I will um, maybe schedule another webinar uh, for uh, to cover other topics as well. Um, but uh, you know, at a high level, uh, if you are savvy marketer or a savvy email sender, uh, you really have to know the art of sending and make sure that you follow the best practices and make sure that you have the right email infrastructure, right technology, um, right tools that can help you to find out the you know, uh, problems with your email content, the infrastructure, follow the best sending practices, make sure that your email list is clean and you're following the complaints. Now, all of these things putting together can, can really make you a good email marketer and good email sender, and you can definitely see a lot of improvement in your email uh, campaign performance, okay? And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. This is a, a weekly webinar that I do it every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific, and here is my contact information if you have any questions, uh, and this is our website. Uh, feel free to contact uh, me or our company anytime. And if you're interested in our mass mailer, uh, feel free to get on our 15-day free trial. Uh, we have a free trial available. We can help you with the trial as well. And um, finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So this uh, video will be posted to our YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube and search for Mass Mailer. You'll find it and make sure that you subscribe. That way you get the frequent updates on the new videos that we have. Once again, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining the webinar today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week again, next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good day. Good afternoon. Good night.